show your support. Follow me on Twitter. Hello, I am That British Guy, and welcome back to my reviews for the free PlayStation Plus games. And in this video I will be looking at Bulletstorm, and later in the month I will be looking at the free Yakuza game. Now Bulletstorm is a first person shooter, there is an element of story within that, but it's fairly kind of vanilla, I would say. It's kind of this generic bad guy that you have been betrayed by and you are after revenge for, but to be honest that is really not the meat of the game. It's more to do with the various mechanics um, involved in the game and the story kind of takes a back seat to that. As it kind of does with most first person shooters and generally speaking this is why I don't really find myself gravitating towards those sorts of games. Um, so your, your Call of Duties, um, your Battlefields, things like that are just not ever really connected with so going into this I kind of thought that it would be more of the same and I am pleased to say that that is very much not the case. Now while as I said there is an element of story to this it does very much take a back seat to the more inventive ways of how to kill people within this game. It is essentially a, uh, a first person shooter, you can't actually play in third person mode at all. But rather than just here is a generic pistol, here is a generic rifle and maybe a sniper rifle, here is your level, go and kill people. There is kind of a lot more to this than initially met the eye. Now you kind of get a feel of that right from the beginning because the characters are just these Duke Nukem type like muscle bound god guys so you could already tell that it was going to be a little bit off the wall but just after like the prologue you, you get thrown into this insane environment you are given this uh, device a kind of a whip thing um, and you're able to pull people towards you with that and manipulate areas of the environment with it and when you do that especially with people it goes into this weird slow motion mode although you're moving around at normal speed and everybody else is it's only this person that's thrown towards you and that's so that you can kind of manipulate that body shoot at it kick at it and um, in kind of a way so that you can um, kill them in more uh, creative means shall we say and that's really the whole point of this game the game actually has a system in place whereby there are various different point systems allocated for how you kill people so if you just run through a level and shoot at people a couple of times you kind of maybe get 10 points for each shot and then maybe 100 or something for when they die or 25 for when they die depending on how many bullets it takes um, but if you're able to dismember them, if you're able to throw them into areas of the environment or off a cliff or things like that, then you get a lot more points for that. And that's really the whole point of the game. Because you need these points in order to successfully progress through the game. Um, I, at the beginning, had quite a lot of issues with the... Uh, the ammo that you're given because you're constantly having to buy more and that was really because I wasn't properly embracing the madness of the game if you like and was wondering why I couldn't just headshot things ahead of me and kill them in one hit things don't die in one hit here everything is a bullet sponge but once you kind of embrace what the game is trying to do it makes sense as to why they are that way because otherwise it would just be a very vanilla generic first person shooter here is a, a level shoot the people I mean you do still kind of get a sense of that you are kind of driven through a corridor essentially into a slightly wider area there's usually then some kind of a, a mini ambush and you're basically charged with getting rid of the enemy within that area before you can proceed on to the next bit. Sometimes there are sort of mini bosses within that um, that have got bigger armour and heavier weaponry and you've got to kind of work a way round to kill them uh, as quickly and as effectively as possible. But ultimately 
that's kind of the 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 way it works just like most other um first person shooters now there are certain areas where you are kind of charged with just getting through that area as quick as possible and the enemies kind of just swarm in from from out of nowhere all the time so you can't actually clear that area but you just kind of run through them and, and shoot your way through but the other areas is very much here is an area kill everything now as i was saying this point system is very important um, every now and then there are kind of these drop areas where you get to spend these points to upgrade your various weapons. Now obviously you just start off with just the one um, and it's just a fairly bog standard rifle. You then get um, a pistol, um, this weird flail grenade thing that fires a grenade on a chain at something and wraps around them and then you can explode it. There is um, a sniper rifle as well that is insane uh, and I'll kind of explain that a little bit later as to why and they also once you pay to unlock them have kind of secondary ammunition which is a lot stronger and a lot more devastating but that also leads to more points and that's really the, the kind of meat of it to get through these areas with as many high points as possible so that you can keep fighting your way through. Now on to kind of the the sniper rifle as I said there are other crazy things in this game now just to give you an idea of that the sniper rifle itself the bullet once it gets within the vicinity of the enemy that you were aiming at you go back into that slow motion situation and your enemy kind of figure that there is a bullet about to hit them and if you let it fly along its trajectory 99% of the time they will dodge out the way. However you can counter this by remote controlling the bullet towards where they are. Because of course there is another section where you are given the remote control to a huge like Godzilla mechanic dinosaur thing with laser beams. Okay of course and after a little while you are given this uh, kind of grenade launcher but it fires these bouncing balls effectively that blow up after a certain amount of time and throw your enemy into like a thousand different pieces in a thousand different places. There are a few enemies that have them as well and you can just kick them back because why not and the kick mechanic is brilliant for this. When you pull people towards you you can kick them and they stay in slow motion and you can kind of follow them and just keep kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking at them. Um, it's quite fun. You can impale people against spikes and cactuses. You can throw them into explosives to just cause huge damage to the area around you and to everybody else around you as well. It's mental, this game. There is one point where there you're kind of in the middle of a city and you're on this helicopter and there's this mutated gigantic thing that is literally the size of skyscrapers and you're just shooting at it with a rail gun it's you versus that with a that it, it's insane there's this massive plant thing that again has mutated that is um, attacking you and it's like a Venus flytrap effectively it tries to kind of grab you and swallow you and yeah you're fighting it off with a few guns and just trying to cause as much damage to it as possible it has a few weak spots but it just keeps coming and coming and coming and the whole thing is just a testosterone filled gore fest effectively but not in a revolting way if that makes sense it's just all completely played for laughs I, you can't take this game seriously at all it's absolutely bonkers and is like nothing else I think I've ever experienced. And once I got through the kind of initial stages of the ammo issues, um, I would say use the kick mechanic as much as possible towards the beginning to save on bullets and just kind of embrace the whole kill things as inventively as possible to collect as many points as you can because as I said everything is a bullet sponge, you can't just headshot things in get through the level doesn't work like that that's not what this game is for if it was it would just be boring as hell so once you get over that and you collect a few other guns and it becomes a lot more kind of interesting the cutscenes are fairly few and far between so you're just kind of moving through the stages fairly quickly and I found myself 
very very engrossed in just getting through to the next bit and thinking I'll just get through to the next bit and leave it at that and then yeah you get this sniper rifle with remote control bullets or you get through and you're controlling a mechanical Godzilla with a remote control that can fire laser beams at things so you can't just put it down at that point you have to keep going and then something else happens and something it's just absolutely insane now because it is different it hasn't kind of put me on to first person shooters because there's no way any other game is going to play like this but as long as you don't take it too seriously and you just kind of go with it and accept everything that the game throws at you it's fun as all hell <laughs> there are really only maybe three negatives that i have one is the crouch system whereby you have to constantly hold down the l3 button but the problem is the L stick is you're walking around, so it's very easy to accidentally uncrouch when you're trying to use that for cover. Now, this is the second issue. There isn't really a proper cover system. It's just trying to get bits of the environment between you and the enemy, and nine times out of ten that is okay, but sometimes you can accidentally slip from cover without really realising it, especially if you're trying to crouch behind low cover that can become a little bit problematic. You kind of get used to it as you go on, but it's just something that maybe they could have put in, some kind of cover system, so that you could then blind shoot from within that cover, possibly. Because there are times where you are kind of overrun and you need to get the hell out of dodge. Now, thankfully, the health is regenerative. Uh, normally, that is a big issue for me, but with something like this, it is definitely essential. I can understand why they did it. Otherwise, you would be kind of constantly looking for health drops. I mean, I was playing this on normal, and yeah, I did die a few times, but as long as you are able to kind of run behind some cover and kind of lay low for a few seconds, you can then kind of get back into the fight, and you're not kind of being gunned down all the time, but you're also not staying behind cover for so long that it kind of breaks that experience of what you're doing in that part of the level. The other kind of minor issue is, is as I've already mentioned, with the kind of limited ammo that you have at the beginning. I think that might have just been kind of how I was trying to play the game at the start, because once I did kind of go on this inventive killing spree, it became less and less of an issue, and it actually got to the point where I was able to sort of fully upgrade my uh, guns in terms of their ammo capacity and their kind of extra weaponry that they had so it didn't really prove to be that much of an issue and because you can only carry three guns at once um, when you get to these kind of next drop off points which are fairly um, common you can just swap out another gun for something else if you're running a little bit low and don't have enough points to really reload with it you can just swap out for another gun and just kind of get your way through with that it's pistol shotgun um, kind of that uh, grenade launchery thing, there's various different things that you can use there's not really a set standard way of killing the the kind of the main enemies um, or really the bosses, you can kind of use anything to get yourself through, it's what you're more comfortable with so that moves us on to buy, try or fly now as you can see here on the PlayStation Store at the moment this game with all the DLC as this comes uh, is priced at $34.99. Now, the DLC is effectively just a few extra maps as far as I can see. I haven't really experienced them properly yet, but uh, they're kind of multiplayer uh, maps that you can play around with with a few extra challenges. So, although that's great that you're getting that for free, $34.99 does seem a bit steep. And as this is a PlayStation 3 kind of reskin, effectively, and a, a kind of remaster, I couldn't suggest you buy it, certainly not for $34.99. There will be second-hand copies of this game that you could pick up for much cheaper, and it might not necessarily be worth getting the kind of full version with the DLC, because you still effectively get the same game without it. And because this was initially a PlayStation 3 game, there's no reason why you couldn't just pick this up secondhand for the PlayStation 3 for maybe sort of a tenner. And that would be definitely worth a purchase. Um, but in terms of it being priced at £34.99, I would have to say it's really only worth trying it and seeing for yourself. But if you were able to pick it up cheaper than that, and certainly on the PlayStation 3, then yeah, a tenner 
15 maybe would be sort of a fair amount to pay for this game. So there we go, they were my thoughts on Bulletstorm. If you have played this game, either the PlayStation 4 version or the old original PlayStation 3 version, which I'm sure would play exactly the same and look pretty similar, um, please let me know what you think of it in the comments below, whether you're happy with it, um, whether you were able to kind of just go with it and have fun. As I said earlier, I will be playing through Yakuza as well and reviewing that in a couple of weeks' time. But until then, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.